What's up, Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys and gals. I hope you missed me too, because it's been like two or three weeks since my last video dropped, and I apologize. There's a reason for that. Um, my iMac took an eye crap, and I lost all of my footage and files and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I was able to save some things, but I had to put a new hard drive in that computer and basically reinstall, re-download all the apps and programs. It's just been a nightmare, but I'm back and I'm glad we're finally getting to this collaboration project, the Alpha Daytona Homage watch. This is a great watch with a really cool story behind it. And I did a collaboration with Miguel from SoCal Watch Reviews. He dropped his video a couple of weeks ago when I was also supposed to drop this one, that didn't happen. Anyways, go check out his video. I'll link it down in the description. And on his video, I gave five cons to the watch. And on this video, he's gonna give me his five cons to this watch. And I'll of course go over my pros of this piece. How did I get the Alpha Daytona homage or why? And actually has a really cool story. And that is from a fellow YouTuber, Brian Trump, good friend of mine, all the way out in Aruba. He saw my review on the Reef Tiger RGA 3033, I believe is a reference. Um, it's an homage of the Omega Speedmaster. And he's like, dude, I love the look of that watch. Would you be up for doing a trade for the Daytona? And I said, oh, I love that watch, the movement in it, everything, like, absolutely. So. We swapped watches and this one will stay in my collection forever. Again, thanks buddy. I'm gonna shout out his channel. So it's BJT, his initials, and then RC. So he does a lot of remote control vehicle work. Like this stuff looks pro. So definitely check out his channel if you're into RC stuff. I'm gonna link it in the description of course and up here for you to check out as well. Um, so Brian, thank you again, man. I'm, I apologize, it's taking me so long to get to this. I could go into the history and everything of the Paul Newman Daytona from Rolex. Chances are, if you're watching this, you already know the backstory. And if you don't, go watch Miguel's video. He will get into all of the goodies on that. I wanna talk a little bit about the homage aspect of it, because I know some people will say like, dude, homages are crap or I don't like them. They, I watched a video from Hodinkee with Keegan Allen and he actually has an homage of the Paul Newman Daytona from Gevril, Je Gevril, Gevril watches. Um, and it's Swiss made, but it's using the uh, Dubri Dubois movement or whatever it's called, um, where it's an automatic, it's, it has an additional plate, whatever makes it automatic. I think they use that same setup in some of the um, automatic Omegas, if I'm not mistaken, it's from the 90s, somewhere around there. Regardless, they did a limited run of 500 of each colorway or whatever it was. And those watches, I think new, they sold for like a thousand or 1200 bucks. And now they're going for stupid money, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, which just blows my mind for an homage watch, right? Granted Swiss made, but still, if that's what you're wanting and willing to pay for, that's cool. I always wonder if Alpha or if another brand ever dropped the same type of Gevril watch but like not limited edition, the value I feel like on those would just absolutely plummet. So I'd hate to be there holding the bag of a four or five, $6,000 watch. And then all of a sudden another one gets dropped, like not limited edition, that would just be crazy. Okay, let's flip the camera around and take a look. But first, quick wristwatch check for my guys and gals out there. Today I'm rocking my Tudor Black Bay 41. Boom, this thing. I'm like having a second honeymoon with this watch. This thing is amazing. I've come to like appreciate some other aspects to it that I didn't see or feel initially. So I can't wait to do like a follow up video on this watch and talk all about it. I'm rambling. Let's look at the Alpha Paul Newman Daytona. Here we have the specs listed for you to check out. And the watch comes on a vintage three link oyster style bracelet shown here in brushed steel with high polishing done on the sides. They're solid links and hollowed in links, giving some of that vintage vibe as well. And the fold over clasp also has that vintage look and is done just fine with alpha branding, both on the inside and the outside of the clasp. And there's seven micro adjustments allowing for plenty of sizing options. So you can get it to fit just fine. We do of course have a taper on this bracelet going from 20 millimeters all the way down to 16 millimeters. And following along with the vintage aesthetic, we have drilled lug holes on the case for easy strap swaps, which we'll get to some really awesome examples from Artem here in just a bit. And the model has the steel bezel with tachymeter indications engraved into the bezel and then filled with black paint. 
I really enjoy this ivory Fotina dial color with the contrast subdials in black. And we see the alpha branding and logo at 12 o'clock with mechanical indication and chronometer wording. However, this watch is not chronometer certified. So I just wanted to point that out. And I believe some of the other models just say mechanical chronograph. We also have chronograph wording in red above the six o'clock subdial, which again is a nod to the Daytona wording seen on the Rolex version. The subdials have the iconic piston style indices. However, on this version, the subdial hands are done in high polish and can be quite difficult to read in various lighting. And lastly, I wanted to point out the subtle details on the chapter ring, sub seconds indices done in red on a black background with high polished square indices at each hour and loom pips at each hour marker as well. With screw down pushers and a screw down crown, you get some really nice feedback when using the watch. The top pusher of course starts and stops the chronograph. And while the chronograph runs up to 30 minutes on the three o'clock sub dial, ticking over at each minute, it will keep running indefinitely until stopped manually. The lower pusher will reset the chronograph hand back to 12, but there is no flyback feature with this movement. The running seconds hand is tracked at the nine o'clock sub dial, and there's a 24 hour indication at the six o'clock sub dial, which is kind of useless in my opinion, but again, it's there and it looks good. So let's take a look at this beautiful movement powering all of this action. I love that we see a mix of gold tone gears, blued screws, and the purple colors of the jewels with a mix of high polish and decorated components. And for the money, this may just be the best looking movement that you can get. Hand winding feels okay, but I always get nervous about overwinding the movement. It's important to note when screwing the crown down, it's always best to reverse the crown as pushing it in to thread it correctly before screwing the crown down fully. And once fully wound, this movement's getting anywhere between plus three to plus eight seconds per day. But let's go ahead and jump back into those strap swaps because this watch is an absolute strap monster. Now looking here, you can see I have four straps from Artem. These are their new NATOs offered in 20 millimeters. Now you'll notice these colors look pretty familiar. We got the classic Bond NATO and then there's the new No Time to Die Bond NATO next to it. I love the look with these straps on this watch. It's just a match made in heaven. And then this because of the red on the sub dial, almost looking orange in some lighting, pairs up pretty good with this black and orange stripe NATO. And then with the blue, red and gray NATO, it ties in just well. It's got high polish hardware, so it's gonna tie in with the watch, both the sides of the case and the bezel, so no issues there. And the construction of these new Artem NATOs, I'm really impressed with this. It's thick and it just has a nice robust feel to it. So I can't wait until they make a 22 millimeter version on these NATOs because I will definitely be putting in an order. Um, a lot of my other watches, I would have liked to have put these NATOs on, but they're 22 millimeter lug widths. So I'm gonna have to wait until they have the 22 millimeter options. But if you wanna pick some of these up, I'll link them down below in the description for you. All right, moving on. Okay, so five pros of this watch. The first one, of course, is the look and aesthetic. It's an homage of the Paul Newman Daytona. And now they have the other versions you can get too. So if you don't want the stainless steel bezel, and you want that kind of Bakelite um, look, you can get that too. If you want color dials, pa Panda, reverse Panda, they have those options from Alpha. So I think for the look and the aesthetic of it being pretty spot on is awesome, but different enough to where it's not a one-to-one. -one. I think that's really cool. Now the second pro is of course the movement. You're getting access to that Siegel mechanical hand wind chronograph, which is just phenomenal for the money in my opinion, the finishing on it, the quality. It's really, really awesome to be able to have one of these in the collection. So I think that is a huge pro for this watch. Kind of tying into number two is the fact that number three, there's an exhibition case back. So some of those other automatic chronographs, even other watches that use the same Seagull movement, they have a solid case back, which to me defeats the purpose. You want to be able to see that movement. That's one of the things that's like the coolest features about this watch, in my personal opinion. So I love that they put the exhibition case back. Way to go, Alpha, great choice there. So number four is the screw down pushers and the screw down crown. Having that tactile feel of the screw down pushers and crowns, you don't have to worry about it running accidentally or bumping it into anything. Um, just a little more security and peace of mind. I think that's awesome. And then last but not least, in no particular order, number five, the case dimensions of this watch are perfect. It's gonna fit a variety of wrist sizes out there. Um, it's not super chunky but it wears just right and it has just the right specs for dial size 
and also case width. So I think that they just nailed it when it comes to the dimensions of this watch. So I've given you my pros. I want to let Miguel go ahead and share the cons that he came up with for this watch. So Miguel, take it away. Let's hear it. Dave, thank you so much for the invite. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, the acrylic crystal. I mean, I honestly prefer a sapphire crystal and I get it, it's the vintage aesthetics or whatnot, but I already scratched up my, my crystal and I don't know, it's one millimeter thick. It's cool, but at the same time, it's a little, a little too, too, too thick for me. Number two is the QC issues. As I said in my video, um, the chronograph hand does not align with the 12, you know, after you reset the chronograph, uh, actually it aligned in the beginning and then it misaligned. So yeah, that's not something that I, that I like. Number three, uh, would have to say the power reserve. Uh, supposedly you get 42 hours with the ST19, but I found that if you engage with the chronograph a lot, it gives you less than 40, and that could definitely be uh, a downfall. Uh, another negative, negative number four, I would have to say is the thickness. I mean, we're looking at almost 16 millimeters of thickness, so that is definitely uh, a, a big big boy and uh, you know although it is wearable because of the smaller sizing and I like it I would like to see it at least 15 millimeters or something a little bit less uh, and last but not least number five I would say originality it is an homage watch after all uh, I mean it's cool I love the Newman watch and and that's why I'm keeping it in the collection but I would like to see it be different I know it has some text and it has some subtle differences but I would like to see more more differences for me to look at this watch and look at a Newman and, and completely see two different watches. But anyway, those are my negatives. Dave, thank you so much for inviting me and letting me be part of this project. Keep up the good work, my friend. I mean, I pretty much shared everything that I wanted to share about the Alpha Paul Newman Daytona homage watch. Special piece to me because of Brian swapping watches with him. But I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the Alpha? Paul Newman Daytona homage watch. What do you think of the Jevril compared to this one? I mean, yeah, one Swiss made, automatic, but would you pay four, five, six, seven grand for that watch? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one. Cause to me, I'm like, I'll just sit back and wait and hope someone makes the exact same thing for a lot less money. But let me hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you for the love and support. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more like this. But until next time, as always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.